you will be recorded. We are recording, so that way yeah. I could send the presentation back to you guys if you want it. Well, I'll send it to you anyway. It's up to you if you want to take it or not. We will. Let me mute you guys. So again, you'll be able to mute, mute your, unmute yourself if you need me. So either unmute and ask or send something in the chat so I can see it. Make sure we're not messing around the chat and talking so I could kind of see instead of having to scroll around finding who needs help or who has a question. I'm still having a few people jumping in, so we'll see. What is the difference? Of, oh, oh. Don't worry, Jacob, we will go over all that. So every, you guys received the the little worksheet, hopefully, and either printed it out or or it was able to create one on a piece of paper if you weren't able to print it out. The the worksheet you will we'll go over it. You'll see it in a little reason in a little bit of why I labeled zones and areas and type of cross. We'll explain all that before we actually use the worksheet. So don't worry. Uh, people that can't get in. Why can't I have people get in? One second. Somebody can't get in. Mm -hmm. uh, the worksheet is downstairs. Oh, no. What worksheet? The worksheet I sent you. I Do you not have the worksheet, David? I emailed a worksheet out to everybody through the email that you guys sign up with, so it would have it would be in there. Question. Why would question. we need Somebody two say. of them? Why? Excuse me. What? Why would we need two of them? Because there's going to be two separate parts of it. Oh, you'll okay. fill out one and then you'll fill out another. Okay. Which one is it? Okay, sorry, I'm still. I don't know which one it is. Okay, so we'll get started. Damien, mute yourself because I we could hear you. Okay, everybody's in. Okay, so what we're doing today is we're we're looking into the tactical crosses. So when we what we're gonna talk about on the crosses, what you'll see on the screen is you'll see the in game cross you'll see the early crosses and you'll see the cutback crosses. Why do I have people still coming in? Okay, sorry, people kept coming in. So what we talk about, so the, when we talk about the crosses, the in-game cross is just itself, just play the game of flow. When you're we're playing in the game, the ball is played out, plays back, plays wherever, it's just in the game, it crosses it eventually into the box. So we've, we've categorized that as just a regular cross. We've also categorized the early crosses, meaning doing it early. If you guys are muted, or make sure you guys mute yourself. Mute yourself. There we go, okay. Somebody's still not muted, so make sure you guys mute yourselves. And then the cutback cross, the cutback cross would be us going to the, the touchline or the byline, what they call it, which is between the, the touchline and the six or the touchline and the 18, that would be why they call it the byline, by meaning two, line meaning obviously line. So we'll go over those. Okay, so we're getting going. So again, as you see, we just show it real quick so we could, we have an explanation. And so as we'll, we'll break it down, in the 
in our lecture format and then we'll break it down with a lot more of the videos today so you'll be seeing videos of the things so you'll see what we say is on positioning wise you'll see that we will have crossing from area one area two and area three just in the same thing you see the goalkeeper should always be more central and we'll talk about when the goalkeeper should be stepping closer to the post or away from the post or away or closer to the six yard box so everything will be discussed today on all types of crossing so when we do when we talk about the crosses so these are things that you probably need to make sure you jot down write down make a little quick note of it however you want to do it because we'll we'll kind of reference this as we go through it and so the most important things to remember when we talk about the crosses are the goal is number one the goal is no longer your first priority what that means is the the ball is outside of shooting angle it's more of what we call a crossing angle so you need to take up the angle being prepared for that cross and being prepared of where you feel the ball is going to land and so can you get into a spot in a position that best suits you to possibly get the cross or at least if you are not able to initially get the cross can you be in a spot where if you stay away you're already prepared for now the shooting angle so we need to understand anytime a cross happens we're no longer the goal is no longer your priority so don't stand on the post being afraid of getting scored on because that's not what's going to happen unless they miss kick it our positioning to cover the crossing area right so again just making sure that we're we're stepping into a position that we are able to step out and save that cross if needed the angle of your body so that you could always see the field so what we talk about on that is making sure that we're not looking straight at the ball we're actually slanted or tilted ourselves so that we could see where the ball is coming from but we could also see where the rest of the players are so we're able to organize them so we're not surprised when the ball is crossed so we actually have already told people to mark up we know where they're coming from and so if our body is in the correct shape then we're able to do that oh we have people that are coming in again sorry they must got kicked out and then the ready position so what we talk about on the ready position is making sure you know, our, our feet are pretty much where they need to be close enough to our to our shoulder length we shouldn't be too wide we shouldn't be bouncing too much our legs should be ready to jump if needed our upper body meaning in our hands making sure that we're we're in a catching type mode we're ready to actually go out for a ball and hold especially on the hands if we're talking about a cross from like let's say a corner kick and there's people involved you want to make sure the hands and the upper body is free so just making sure we're aware of that and then the last thing is what works for you so what works for you may not work for all and meaning certain people will tell you to do certain things and it's important for you and us as goalkeepers and myself or all goalkeeper coaches to understand that everybody's different and everybody needs to be sort of more individualized so if there are certain things that you feel feel awkward to you don't work for you like some people want your hands to be held up the whole time maybe that doesn't work for you maybe some people want you to be more slanted or not slanted or maybe just bend the knees more whatever it is just making sure it what works for you and make sure you're not just becoming like we talk about that robotic sense that coach told me to do it so I'm doing it so again just make sure we're aware as we go through this next part of the session you're going to see kind of what we on your sheet what we're talking about you'll see where it says on your sheet somebody's still not muted so if you're not muted make sure you're muted on your sheet you'll see where it says which zone is the ball in so the zone as you see these are the zones so if the ball were anywhere in this area outside the 18 that would be kind of in that zone one zone two would be inside the 18 zone three would be inside the 12 and zone four would be pretty much inside the six so when it talks about which zone the ball is in you're going to watch clips and you're going to have to at least recognize that the next part you're going to see is which area is the ball in and if you look over you'll see the area area one so what you'll see there is you're going to see balls that are in this area area one it's going to be different than what are balls that are in area two and then obviously you're going to see area three would be a different part so when you're watching the clip what you're looking for is you would probably right away just put in zone one area the ball is in let's say 
falls in area two. So simple as that. What type of cross? That's what we talked about earlier. Is it an in-game cross where they're touching it, playing it, and then cross it? Are they crossing it early? Or are they taking it to the byline and doing a cutback cross? So you'll be putting that into there. And then you'll explain is the, the position that the goalkeeper took up, is it a good position, yes or no? And then make comments if you want. I will comment and point out things in the video. So that's the point where you should probably jot down items. So you could, when I do send this back to you guys as a presentation, and if you want to review it, at least you kind of have an idea of what the clips are because of the notes that you've taken. So like I said, you'll do one series of them. Actually, you'll do six of them. And then that's all for that sheet. And then you'll move on to the next sheet. And there's, I believe, seven more. So is the worksheet mandatory? If you don't have the worksheet, like I said, if you can make that on paper where you're we're creating clip one through 10 and just making a box where you're able to put is the zone in, is the ball in zone one, is it area one, what type of cross like we just discussed. So it'll help for future for if you actually using the, the worksheet like it's designed. So we talk about this. So the, for the next pretty much 15 minutes, we're gonna be talking about our our positioning and the angle. So when we talk about area one, you can see obviously you see the one. And what we've designed here is the light blue is where the person should be the light blue. The Columbia blue, darker blue color is more of the cutback. It's always gonna be the same. They're always at the near post set at that cutback area. So that one's just never gonna change. So we see at the ball, the area one, and in the zone two, then we would be in the maroon area. You should be stated to the maroon area and it goes down to the yellow and it goes down to the gold. So what we're trying to, starting to see is where we, should we be in that in a crossing area? Should we be totally near post? Should we be far post? Should we be in the middle? Depending on zone one, because it is closer to the 18, you might want to give up, get a little bit closer towards your, your from the middle. You wouldn't be totally in the middle because of that. As the ball moves outward and farther outside the 18, obviously you can move away from it as well. So, and we'll start doing it. So we'll go through them. So as you see on area two, you see everybody now has shifted a little bit to the, a little bit closer to the middle, depending on, I forgot about the, the grayish, dark blackish area. That one's on the, on the line. So most of the time on the line, you're gonna be situated. You know that they're gonna be at a crossing angle at that point. Understand that on two, especially when we look at the gold, once they get in that area, they will be able to cross it in. The gold and the yellow, when we discuss this, you're gonna see this could be more of a set play situation or maybe it's a dead ball. And that's why the player, the player is a little bit higher off the line. Okay, so when you see the gold and we talk about the gold, just notice that it's probably a set play. The black, the blue, and the maroon are the ones that are the in play. And then you see position three is a lot farther away, closer to the, the touch line. We should be definitely central. There's no reason for us to be towards the near post in this situation because we know the, the ball is going to be crossed. It needs to be crossed into this crossing area. So again, where we feel that the area would be crossed into, that's why we step into and as high as possible without getting beat or cheating too much. Just so we're in the, we have an idea that when the ball is crossed in, are we able to possibly come out and get it? If we're not able to come out and get it and we do say away, now at least we're already in what we call that shooting angle. So we didn't have to start all the way to the near post and then shuffle all the way across as the shot hits and then get beat maybe back across. We're already in the position, we're already situated and it makes it a lot easier for us as goalkeepers. If you notice when we did this one, two and three, they didn't move much, but moving two to three steps is gonna be huge for us just having the idea of being able to get to that ball. And that can be the difference between a couple inches of having to get there with a fist or even just getting there to hold the ball. So it's gonna be a little bit tedious, but just make sure you understand it. It's a bit, it's very important. Coach. Now, yes. Uh, should we have started okay. writing this down? Oh no. So I'm no. just kind of going over it. So I'm just going over it. So you'll have an idea of what to look for. So then when we start doing the video, 
then we hope that you kind of have an idea live of what it's going to look like because I didn't want to just show you guys a bunch of squares because that would be kind of interesting. So, no, you don't have to write anything down right now. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. So what we did now is we actually put in an attacker. So what's going to be important, this will happen at all ages. It definitely is going to be more important for the older ages that as you start to have attackers that are coming in, if you notice where the attackers are already positioned, you guys can see my little pointer. It's important that the position that this attacker is already at the 12, it's going to be totally different if the attacker started at the 18, and obviously different if the attacker is already on the 6. But in the situation that we're talking about here, if the attacker is about 12 yards out and the ball is in play at the area one, that's where you would be. Now you need to be a little bit closer because this is what's going on. What we're assuming at this point is there's only one attacker running in. There is no attacker at the far post or middle. And so we don't go with what our standard of standing more central anymore because we have to worry about if the ball, let's say, is at position one in the light and blue, if it is whipped into the near post and he's running in or she's running in, are you in a good spot to deal with that right away? Okay, so this area is no longer as important or is not as dangerous at this point in time because you've noticed that the guy is here or the girl is here. And that goes back to why we say we need to be able to stand diagonal so that we can see what's going on with the ball and we can also go see what's going on with our outside field player. Field player. And then as we see it, the maroon, same thing. We get a little bit more back, but because of the, the angle, it could be possibly in the shooting. The You'll see the gold and the, and the yellow. They're kind of dotted because, like I said, this at this point would be a set play, and this wouldn't be in-game because, obviously, he or she would be outside. outside. And then the black one would be right here because this one definitely, if the ball is in this area, that would definitely be outside. So this one doesn't even apply, and that's why we made that black. So just so you have a, a note when you're looking at these, if you are looking at these more in the future, that means basically it doesn't even apply. We are not going in the rooms tonight, no. People going next week, Thursday and Monday, they will be in the rooms, just so you know. Okay, so we move on. So that was the area one. So area two, our area one with two attackers, then obviously now, because you have to deal with both attackers, near post and far post, you'll notice that everybody was a little bit more near. Now you've noticed that we've shifted a little bit more central to our two where our standard spot is, but we are still more of awareness. The awareness needs to be that the near post runner is there and because he's so close that we would take up a position a little bit closer in area one. Remember, this is all area one. And because it's so close to the 18, that's why we're a bit closer. If we were at area two, then we would be, we could be a little bit farther off because the ball is farther away, but again, we're still only worried about one attacker coming at us. So we've got to make sure that we we make sure ourselves are our situation at that point so we could deal with it. And again, once we have two attackers, we would be able to move back because when the ball is in area two because of having to deal with both. Area three, when it's far out, at this point when it's that far and there's an attacker near post, you're okay to stand where you're at because the distance between the ball traveling and the distance between you now going to that spot is gonna be okay. So you don't have to be as close. It's actually better just to go ahead and stand in your our standard area, depending on where they're, where they're at. Again, if they're farther out, almost to the touch line, then definitely you can stand more in the central area. And then once you see two, again, we, we noticed we didn't move much, but again, it, we did move slightly into a center area so that we could deal with both people. Now we have to respect that if they do want to play it into this spot, are we far enough back that we could deal with getting the ball at the top, the top of the six, a little bit more towards the far post without staying away and then having him or her head that in inside the six yard box. What about with three attackers? So if we had one person running near, one person running far, and one person sitting in the slot, nothing would change. You pretty much would stay just like you would with the two attackers. Right, so when you have the three attackers, this would what would change is if it's in the zone one, I mean the area one, 
you might be a little bit closer slightly just because you have to respect our near post runner. We just do not want them to have a, a hit ball low and we're so far out that we can't get to that. So for each situation, it's going to be different, but we, we just want to make sure we're always mindful. And again, it goes back to making sure we're situated. We've already understood who's running at us because of our placement, our stance and our positioning, but that when this happens, we're, we are not surprised and we could take up a good position. So we move on. And then so quickly, we'll just, so we understand that now there is nobody running at the near post and there's only people far post or just maybe out in this area and they haven't gotten into the near post area. There's no reason for us to be totally close in area one. Right? We should be pretty much in the middle, maybe a little bit close, not too much in area one, just for like I said, sometimes you can't trust that they might miss hit it. So you want to be prepared for that. But at this point in time, you're wanting to make sure you know that if anything, the ball's going to go far post or they want to go into the area of the far post. He or she's going to make the run, but we want to take up a, a, a good crossing angle so that we're prepared right away. And you see area two definitely will be more centralized. And then area three definitely would be still in the central. And again, it's again, hopefully we understand we're, we're recognizing that the farther out the ball is, the farther we should be. We should not be on our line when the ball is in the maroon area. And we definitely should not be on our line if the ball is in the gold or the yellow area. So make sure we see that. Any questions on that? Because we are, we're gonna, we will now use the sheet. Did anybody, I know somebody said that we, did everybody get a sheet or figure out how to use a sheet or create a sheet? If everyone has them, we're good. I think there was a couple that was telling me that they did not have one or if it was going to be important. So realistically, yes, it, for the next, what we're going to be doing, it, it makes sense to have it. So, or at least write something down. All right, so you need it. So make sure you have them. So again, the clip, what we're, when we do the clip, it will go kind of fast. It's just a regular in-game clip. You'll see it. I'll let it sit. If you guys actually want to see it again, and then you have to go back and let you see it again, that's fine. Just let me know. But for the most part, figure it out, see it, act as if it was in the game, and how you would how you would do it in the game, and not ask me to watch it three more times. What do you do if you don't have a worksheet? You do not have it. So, did you? Do you have a paper? Okay. Do you have paper? Uh, yes, I do. Okay. So you'll just make on the paper. Just make a create a one, a two, a three, four, five, six, seven. There's just like I think seven slides. Okay. Thank you. And and then you'll just have to make. You're going to say, is the ball in zone, which ball is the zone in, which area is the ball in, and then what type of cross is it? Okay. Thank you. Do you remember what those were? Yes. These areas? The zones? Mm -hmm. So, got it? Yes. And then, is the goalkeeper in a good position? Because you'll notice that too, so I expect us to have okay. an idea on that. Okay. All right. What were the types of crosses again? Say that again? The types of crosses, like what were they again? The cross would be, so the in-game cross, an early cross, okay. and the cutback cross. Thank you. What time is this ending? Uh, late, Sorry. George. Right? You got somewhere to go? You're quarantined, you can't go anywhere, so. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Wait, Coach, Any other I'm questions? We're good. The area. Like, I'm again? confused on what that is, like what the area is. So that would be where the ball, the actual 
ball is on the the width of it. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, okay. I, I, yeah. I, don't really, zone, I don't know what the zone type of crosses were again. The crosses were what we showed in the very beginning. The oh, okay, yeah. The, the in-game cross, the early cross, and the cutback cross. Got it. So, so you'll see clips where let's say the ball is. You see my little pointer. Yeah. If the ball is in this area. That would be zone one, right? And it would be area one, anywhere in this part. Right? If it was there, it would be area area two, zone one, zone two, zone two. Make sense? Yeah. As you see the ball move, the ball is here. It would be in zone four. Area one, area two, area three. And if it does get into the kind of the cutback areas, you'll see some of them, if they are cut back, it's up to you to decide if, even if it's a little outside this, if it was in here, is it really cut back? So, make sense? Yes. Good. All right. Let's see how we do. That's why we're doing two of them. How will we know if it's early cross or something? Well, because it's crossed early. You'll find out. That's why we've been doing this. Did you get that, Jacob? You good? All right, so we go. So the first one. So again, depending on what your screen is, if you need to make your screen a little bit smaller, because I notice sometimes it's going to be huge, so if you need to make it smaller so it doesn't look as weird, do so. So she gets the ball, we play. So this one's different, so we. We let this play for slightly just to let it, because we're going to talk about this one. We saw where it started. Since this is the first one, we'll do it again so you guys can understand it. This will be your little demo. So she was definitely out in like our the first zone, and she played it in. And at that point in time, that's all we're worried about. Now we're worried if she her crossing position was good or not. We want to know was that an in-game cross, was that an early cross, or was that a cutback cross? So. That right there is actually what we consider more early because you're playing with an early ball. Sometimes it could be it could be in game or early. That one's if or, or either or, just for the point that you see that there's space behind them. So early cross is trying to play it in early to get it into that space behind the defense. That's what we mean by the early cross. And so that's what we have to be aware of when any any time a person has the ball out in that area, we just don't want that early cross and beat us or get behind the defense so that we're we're having them to deal with either breakaways or a wide open shot. Got it? So that was your kind of, hopefully we got it. That's your little freebie. And then I even tell you, pretty much it's an early cross. If I go too quick, please tell me, because we're gonna go through these. Somebody is asking me kind of one thing, sorry. All right, and we play. Again, don't just watch the ball. Try to make sure you're as much as you can when you do see the goalkeeper. Notice where they're at is the whole purpose of this. Now, that one was different because I did that one on purpose again. She's mad, as she should be. So you'll notice as we go through, oh, next one, sorry. What we talked about earlier is making sure that we're in a crossing area and crossing angle. She stayed in a crossing angle the whole time. She never resorted to come to the near post. And because she stayed in that crossing area, she was already set for the shot. Does that make sense? And that's huge. And that's something, the reason why we let that play. And we showed this one is too many times if she would have went to the near post and then went back across and kept getting set to what she thought was a shooting angle, she would not have been set for that shot. And she probably would have, well, the girl missed, but 
she wouldn't have been in the spot to get that. So that was huge. So that's why we showed that. Uh, I have a question. Uh oh, you have a question. Go ahead. Uh, what's the difference between an area and a zone? I'm just confused about that. So again, the area would be where the the width of the ball was at. So if it was closer to the 18, it would have been like area one. If it was a little bit farther than the width of the 18, it would be area two. If it was all the way to the out of bounds area, that would be area three. And then the zone is going towards the goal itself. So the 18 yard box, the 12 yard line, the six yard box. So, oh, okay. the, so yeah. the zones are like ladder-ish? Like yes. if you were to like put it in mind's eye, okay. Right. Coach, I also have a question. Yes. Um, I'm really confused. Is that one the first one or was the freebie the first one? The freebie was the actual first one. Oh, okay. So this was the second one. Was the, that was the second, yeah. Sorry about that. Good call. Okay. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. Oh, we see the next one. Was that early? Was that in game? Or was it a cutback? What area was that that she actually hit that at? What zone was she in? And was the goalkeeper in a good position? We go one more time. So she's outside the 18, in, and we play. So again, that was more of the early cross because she. There's space behind the defense, and that's what we want to talk when we talk about the early cross. If there's space behind the defense and they want to dump it in, that's what we talk about more of the early cross. She got beat. Why did she get beat? That one went fast. Let's watch it again. Oops, sorry. So you notice on that one is that she actually had a good set set position. When the ball was across, she even, if you notice on the video, she actually even saw that the girl was at the far post. All right, so you see, let me do my little pointer. We'll talk about this one since that's what we're here for. So at this point in time, you see her, she actually sees it. She's telling somebody to get to her, All right? So she's telling that where she's at. You see that she's open as well. She's situated in, the, in an area. Oh, wait, we got somebody coming in. She's situated in a good spot. Okay, but now what you see what she did wrong is that when the ball is played, and that's what we talked about, once the ball is played past the near post area person and it's, it continues to go to the far post area, that's why we need to be aware that there was a far post person. At that point in time, she should have continued to shift over slightly to the far post area and then set. And now once that ball's hit, would she have been possibly able to save that? So we watch again. See how she stays and then continue? If she would have continued going towards the far post and then been set, she probably would have saved that. So again, that's a teaching moment on the shot itself and everything that we're going over with our So position she was in the position? She was. She was in the correct position for the initial cross, but now as the cross is happening and it's going into the area, is she continuing to follow it? So it went from near post, correct? So we're uh, the, the goalkeeper's left, it goes from her left to her right. She should have continued to move from near post area to the far post area, or she was already in the middle. She didn't move so to the far post area, so she got beat. So would that be zone one? For the, the cross itself? Yeah. The cross itself. What if the person shot? Like, um, I think that's like three. three. What if she just shot from there? So the zone, because it's outside the 18, you're definitely in the zone one. Okay? Because she's closer to the, the, in this area, that would be area one, right? Okay. 
And then remember the gold one that we talked about? It's almost in that gold. So she's in the spot where she probably could be a little higher. She's fine there because everybody's so deep into the box. So her position initially is good. But we're saying that once once the ball is in flight and is going to the far post, she has not shifted. And if you don't shift, then you're going to get beat for that shot. So now she should have been in shooting angle, and she wasn't off of that header, and she got beat. So. And so that wasn't an, because was that an early cross? That was early. Yes, it's still an oh. early cross. So we move on. So she does well there. She is able to keep her ground. She's able to always continue to watch. She knows that the ball is in a crossing angle, so there's no reason to get to the near post too much. Once the ball is crossed high, she's able to save that shot. So that one was actually it could be considered either more in-game or it actually could have been the cutback because they did take it towards the byline and they hit it back across. So that would be what we would consider almost into that cutback not as close as our what we work on that any of you that work with me but it's definitely considered into the cutback we move on so we saw again the ball again where is it it's out there Right, you see where she's at. She initially she has the ball. Watch how she's situated. This time you'll notice that she actually does move her feet from the near post all the way to the far post, and that's why she actually will save that shot. Not as great of a shot as the first one that scored on her, but same design. So she's in that kind of the near post. She has to be because there's a near post person. She shifts all the way across. She's at least situated. So better on her part. But again, we have to be aware. We move on. Oops, we showed it one more time. Questions on that one? Oh, who got kicked out? People get oh, people just in. So you guys should have, I believe, was that six of those? Seven. There should be there's six or seven. I got seven. I, which, seven. I got five. Seven, okay. Five. You I don't know how. Six or seven. You missed one. I missed it. Or possibly two. Yeah. I think you might have missed a few. So, if you have the next sheet, we're going to move on to the the next sheet of them because there will be there's definitely seven on this one. So it's not going to be enough room, and that way it just keeps it clear, so you know they were different. So make sure you have it. Again, as we're doing this. If you're able to, once you jot down the numbers and the type of crosses they were, and if you felt they were in good position, when I do talk about it in the specific parts of it, make sure you're actually jotting stuff down on that. And if I, you need more time and I'm going too fast, just let me know. So coach, this one would be like so, the correction sheet. This should be the next one. Okay. So uh, the one before it was our, uh, first one, first paper, right? Yeah, so they're going to be the same sheets. It's just there was only, I believe, ten slots for the clips, yeah, and there's going to be there's going to be fourteen total clips. So that's why I gave you guys. That's why I asked you to print out two sheets. Okay. Makes sense. All right. So again, we're all we're all kind of understanding our where we're at on what it looks like. Correct. The zones, do we all have an idea? We got it. So remember the zone is outside the 18. Zone two would be inside the 18 to the 12. Zone three would be inside the 18 or inside the 12 and possibly a little bit inside the six. And then zone four would be all the way almost to the touch line and the cutback. And then, so, and then the area is obviously where the ball is. Is it closer to the, the 18, the width of the 18? Is it farther away to the middle or is it even all the way closer to the out of bounds? 
So that's what area one, two, and three. So we noticed the one on that was basically that was all the girls. So most of their yes. the balls that they played were in the gold area. You had a few that maybe were in the in the maroon, and I think you only had one or two that were in the the black area. So, but what we hopefully did understand in what way that's why I placed the attackers earlier is were we actually recognizing when all this was going on and that's why it's, it's hard to see and when we do our little breakdown of game analysis that's part of why we do this because not only did I ask you guys to know what area the ball was in what zone the ball was in but I also also asked you guys to start to understand where the attackers were at so that's another thing that we should start being aware of when you're watching so as we go on part two make sure you don't forget to be aware of what you see on the attackers, how many are actually coming in, how close they're in, how far away they are. Are they dangerous in the near post area? Are they not? So just be aware of that. That's part of what we're doing here. Okay, so we move on to our second. Oops, that was the first one. Okay. You guys can see that, or it should all be part two. Now we watch the boys. Are we on seven? So technically, this you could you could just keep listing, but if they have if you have the paper, then you would just put the second paper and you just. Pretty much, you could just go back to number one on the second sheet. If you if you were able to print out two sheets, you might as well just use the new sheet, just so you have an idea. Keep it cleaner. Oh, yeah, just I, one. I, I was only did one. If you're just having, if you're writing it all down, then you just make a line, just so it it, it okay. aware makes you aware of where you are or where you should be to the next part of it. Because these are like I said, these are going to be all boys. So if you guys need to put that in there then you could do that all right so we play a little bit faster boys are a little faster what happened there so you see it figure it out tell me what area they were in tell me also what zone it was it was it early cross was it in game cross was it a cutback cross and tell me, did you notice the goalkeeper's position? Oops, we're gonna do that one more time just so you can see it, because it, so make sure again, when we're trying to watch game film, you're always trying to watch whenever you see the goalkeeper come in sight, where were they? So what do you guys think? Was he in good, was he in a good spot? No. Uh, maybe he was a little too far to one side. He was definitely too much near post. There was no reason for him to be. Yeah. So that was definitely an early cross, right? Watch one more time and see, you guys will notice that he was, there was no reason for him to be totally outside of the post. He wasn't, it's one thing that he could be at this post for the shot possibly, but he was actually outside of it. And especially as we get into the older ages, he overcompensated that near post area where there's no way that they're gonna beat him at that near post but they do play that ball across the box like they just did. If somebody was running onto that, there was no way he was gonna get that. So that, that's why we showed that one. That's an important one to see that you have to make sure you take up a spot in a crossing angle to be aware of that early cross like it was for the early cross that's gonna to continue to roll all the way to the near post, all the way across to the far post. If somebody was in there, there was no way that he was gonna get that. So again, just to point that out. And we, we move on. Whoops, wait, we didn't move on. That was the same one. Now we move on. See the keeper, see where the ball, see the play then. So we see again, he actually misses it. So Make sure we understand where the area was. What do we feel that he was, the 
the area that they, they actually played that ball. Do we feel that that ball was played early or do we feel that the ball was played in game? That one was more of an in game, just so you kind of have an idea. He missed it. Does anyone want to point out why he missed that? He was out of position. So Maybe you know the, the right. So we well we you see on my thing I wrote on there. You see the near post and far post runners. So what's important for him to have understood at that point in time is that once that ball is played that high, the near post runner obviously is not not needed. And so he should have been taken off at speed towards the far post because of how close all the runners were initially. The knowledge should have already been there that he, oops, we go again. The knowledge should have already been there that everybody's inside the box. He has two people kind of in that area. So he should have been taken off and he didn't. He kind of waited, 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 almost to the point of waiting for possibly the person that was at the near post. There was no way the near post guy is gonna get that ball. So that would have been more his position was good, but then his the actual execution of his footwork was what it was poor. So he wasn't explosive enough. Correct. Bad footwork, correct. Yes. I didn't read it well. Hey, hey, hey coach. How are you? Next one. We let this one play out. Just notice the goalkeeper again. He got bailed out by his defender. Notice where the defender actually hit, hit it that way. He was probably three yards from it. There's no reason why that the goalkeeper at that point. Would that be an not early hit. cross? No, because if you watch, so the ball is played pretty much it's all in game. See how everyone's in the box? So it's not early kind of to this point because everybody's in the box. So early cross, by definition, would be trying to get the ball into that behind space Wait. where the defenders are at. Does that make sense? Is this yeah. eight or nine? This would be uh, number three, right? Oh, right. <laughs> Sorry. Nine or three. So, again, we'll go. I want you guys to just notice the goalkeeper, where he is at this point, where he's at there. He's still out very far. Now, those of us that were in the discussion part when we had the communication, at this point, when that ball is hit all the way back out to the outside flank, he should have been pushing everybody. And he does, I believe it looks slightly like he's making, or at least one guy is starting to come go get to the ball. But at this point in time, he needs to actually discuss and tell everybody to push up step so that the ball, everyone's getting out. You notice, as you can see, just barely from the clip, you see everybody still pretty much inside the six. You can see where the, the two are at the left side of it. They are probably right on the six, or right on the six. So now there was no space for everybody to get out. Everybody was still in that spot. He, as you can see right there, he still stayed on his line. Where the ball was, he should have been what we discussed and we saw in the in the little square charts, charts, can't talk. He should have been higher off his line and being prepared for that cross instead of being so near post. Now he's actually stepped back and waited for the shot. You can't step back and wait on your line for that shot when that ball is inside the six. And again, luckily he got bailed out. So that was definitely bad positioning, bad all the above. He didn't dictate that right. He didn't talk correctly, probably. He let everybody sit in there. Luckily, his number two is good in the air. We're next one in. So this is, he's in game because he's still taking Oh, sorry about that. That wasn't a bad goal, by the way. So we see, so he takes it down line, crosses in. 
Now, obviously, the, the guy hit a scissor and hit it very well, but what we want to, again, once notice, and we'll show it again. This was more of an in-game cross. So he still has it. If he would have played that ball now behind space, I think Jacob, you were only asking earlier, if you play that ball now and it's early, that would be the early cross because you're playing it behind the defense into the space for possibly people to run on. That would be considered more the early cross. Okay. Instead, he continues. Notice where everybody's at. He's actually, you could tell that the goalkeeper is showing people where to be, making sure people are marked up. At this point in time, he's situated in the near post, which he should because there is a near post runner. But he, when he saw earlier, and he should have saw earlier, is that he, he let me go to the laser so you can see what I'm doing, saying he definitely should have saw that there was two more people. There was a person in the slot, there was a person in the far post, right? So as he gets to that line, not totally the line, is it more, is it a cutback? It's not really, it couldn't be, I wouldn't say it's a cutback because he didn't take it all the way into the to the byline and then cut it back. So cutback, remember again, means you're taking it in, making everybody get deeper in like they did, and then you're playing it back out. So if he would have cut, played a more of a cutback, I guess, you, I guess you could get away with it, but not typically on that one. But again, so now where he fails to at least have a fighting chance to save that shot is that he does not once the ball is past the near post player, he does not continue to get to that far post player's positioning. So at least he could have been set. And once that ball is hit with that scissor, maybe at least he could have had his hand played out and he could have deflected that. So as we watch, notice that once that ball is hit, he still is just now pretty much turning to even get across to the, the far post. So initial positioning was good but the transition from near post area to the far post area was what was, was slowed him down and that was bad. And again, that's what we're talking about here. It's not just about our positioning initially, that helps us, but once the ball's in flight, how are we dealing with our transition for the, the people that are running, the, the near post, the far post, the slot runners that are running. And as you saw, he didn't do it well. So once that ball's played and, and, and it's in play, you always have to be aware of all runners. If the first one doesn't get it, you got to know that there's two more coming. So make sure you don't stop on it like he did. Still probably would have scored because that was quite the amazing goal. We can watch one more time. That was a good play there, too. So I think I saw somebody say that you have to leave soon. And again, we are recording it, so when I send this to you, you guys can catch up and see it. So if you need to. We're moving faster than expected. So we're doing well, actually. Better than I expected. We move on. Any more questions, anybody? We're good. Zone one or zone two. For that one, that probably would have been in zone one. Okay, so we go. Try to look at his positioning. We see where the ball is. We continue on this one because, again, this is a positioning issue. We let it all play out. Watch where he's at. What do you think? I could tell you his position was bad. Why do you think I think he was bad? Anybody want to chime in on that? Could you replay it, please? Yes. I mean, he goes through, he goes through two kind of progressions of it. He's situated there at a cross angle good. He steps a little bit close. Watch where ball is compared to where he is. Okay. 
hugging his near post. He was too much near post? Or you, what'd you say? Say that again? Too much near post. Yes. Where should he have been? And why? But why was he too much near post? What did you see that, other than him being at the near post? There were no oh, runners at the, at the near post. Say that again? There weren't any runners at the near post. Right. There was nobody in, at the, in the near post. And then, number one, so there, he doesn't need to be as close to the near post. And then number two, remember, we talked about our the, the areas and the zones. So it's probably in zone probably three when he gets that. But look how far out he is. He's probably definitely in area two. We would continue to move. So now he's gotten closer, but he's still in area two, so there's no reason to be that close. And like you said, there's nobody that we see at the there's nobody that we see at the near post. So at this point in time, does he even know what's going on over here? Because he hasn't looked. So that could be an issue that we would want to if this was us watching ourselves, we would want to assess that and make sure that we're doing that correctly. So if that ball was where it was hit, so it was hit well, and if somebody was actually making that near post run or going into this spot, they would have easily scored. He should have probably been where he's at now the whole time, maybe a little bit closer, but for the most part, he should have been there. So yes, yeah, so bad position on that. Luckily, he didn't get beat. And again, though, I want us to make sure we understand it. The reason why the positioning was bad is because of how far out the ball was. The ball was in the area two, and there was no reason for us to be so near post, because if the ball is out in area two, that means we have to respect that they can play it up high into the slot or the far post. And because like we talked about, there's nobody in the near post area, there's no reason to condense ourselves closer to the near post. So he was too much near post, too afraid of it, and Luckily, he didn't get beat, but if a runner was there, he would have. Next one. That one was quick, so we'll have to do it one more time. So he plays it in. They'll show kind of a replay, but they're going to show it quick. We see the area he's at. You see where the keeper is. So what do we think? Does anybody want to elaborate on, do you feel he did okay because the ball went out? Or should he have gotten that ball? or? Did everything look good on that one? Yeah, I think so. Did I lose everybody? Oh, you're just doing it. It was good. Can you replay one more time? Okay, we'll play one more time. But again, you see, he never moved pretty much stay in the near post the whole time. I mean the far post. So we'll let it, I'll stop it as it gets to this one. So make sure we understand where the zone is. He's outside his 18. He's inside the width of it, so he's kind of closer. So he should have been a lot more central to start, correct? But he should have been, because we said he's outside the 18, should have been probably a lot more higher off his line. Instead, it looked like he was probably inside the whole time. Once that ball is played across and into the away area, he, that ball is inside the six. There should be no reason why he, he can easily gobble that up. If he would have been in a better starting position, he probably would have definitely got there. So, yeah, so... Starting position could have been better. Probably would have helped them to be, just get, that would have been probably two or three steps to get to that area. 
and probably would have caught it here. Instead, it dropped and he got bailed out. Again, the position, we need to make sure our position does perfect. That was an early cross. Let me show it one more time because I want you guys to. Oh, wait, this is the next one. So we move on. So watch again. So remember, we talked about him last time with his feet not doing well. So he stays high off his line. Easy there because the ball is out there. He actually drops in deep, reads it, and actually does punch that one away. What do we think? So yes, I believe, I think still he started deep. He still was way too deep on that one. There was the notion that he, he was a little bit near post, which he should have, because if you notice, there was the near post runner. I keep going too far there. But we'll keep stopping this one until we watch. So at that point in time, as we stop it, you already should be assessing. You know definitely what's going to happen at this point. Mm, is it a cutback? Again, it was hit straight cross it could be considered a cutback because it was to the byline you could put that in or it could just be more of an in-game cross so either one would would apply at that point but this is important that we know definitely it's going to be a cross at this point in time he he's situated where he could see the ball and the players for the most part did he notice that the near post runner was already in that area i think he did because he stayed there as the ball came and then he was aware as we we'll let it play a little bit At this point, he's situated. He has to respect that the near post runner is close. There is there is no way that they're going to shoot that. It's definitely a crossing angle. So at that point, I think he's good. Could he have been a little bit higher off his line? Probably. I think he's still too close to his line. But he actually does get this one, so we have to be happy. But as you notice, he's pretty much reaching as much as he can for that. So we, we like to at least think that since this time he was in a better mode of looking, hopefully he did see that there was somebody running at the far post. So at that point he was able to definitely make sure he was able to get something on it or else he knew he would get scored on, we would assume. Because we saw earlier he, he didn't move and he almost got scored on. So on that one, I think if he would have been higher off his line to start because of that, the area the ball was in, it was still, again, a little bit far out then at that point in time, he probably could have maybe just caught that depending on he wouldn't have had to make so much of the footwork. That one's definitely situational because he does have to respect the near post person. So sometimes it is, we do have to gauge on a little bit on the safe side to watch that near post person. So we'll give it to him on that one. Could he have been back to the far post a little bit more? Yeah, like I said, we, we I think we kind of said it. We thought on the he could have still been a little bit farther back, but he needed to be definitely in the near post, but I think he gets to the point where he's not so much farther back, maybe staying a little bit higher off his line still. Like, as we notice, ah, I didn't stop. I need to work on my stop and starting modes here. One more time. So he... If he would have been off his line because of how close they were going to the byline, there was no way that there's going to be a shooting angle from that as close to that byline. He could have stepped higher off his line and probably would have been able to caught it. So he was okay to be in his position centrally, but he could have been a little higher off his line, definitely. Yes, we know it's number seven. Why do you keep putting seven? Okay, so. That should have been the, yes, I think there was only seven of those, so that should have been it on those. Our next thing, so what we need to, when we see this, you probably saw it five times because I kept hitting it. So what 
we understand as the goalkeepers and hopefully when we do this with our coaches and they take us through it tactically and what we want to be able to start to understand and take back so that when our coaches yell at us for not being able to come out for a cross or to not be able to save the ball, we need to make sure we there's a lot of things that go through our head when we're we have to deal with the cross. As you see, there's 14 of them. But just to anybody that watches on the sideline, our job looks easy, and that's why we say, how come, how come they didn't come out for that ball inside the six? Like we said on that one, well, if our position would have been better, we probably would have. But there's so many things that could happen during a cross. And as you see, we we kind of pointed out some of them that we want. I want to go over. And just make sure you guys see this. Like I said, when I send these this slide, this presentation home, you just want to you want to definitely make sure that when you you're aware of these. So when a cross happens, we're looking right away what type of cross it could happen, what kind of what type of cross it could be. We in game when everyone's in play and our defenders are are adequate and they're all organized. That's more the in game. We're all prepared for the cross. If there is space behind the defenders, that's what we're talking about, where we want to make sure that that early cross can happen. So we need to be aware of it. We need to make sure that we're positioned correctly and not just thinking we got time because nothing's happening. If they want to dump that ball in, we have to be aware because if we have to come out and receive that ball, we need to be on our toes and we can't hesitate. So what type of cross is it? So that's going to be important. Obviously, if it goes into a cutback, are we stepping more and more to the near post? That's going to be an issue. We have to also worry about the width of the cross that we talked about those areas. Okay, how far away is it? The length of it, meaning length, meaning how far out outside the 18, inside the 18, the length of it. That's huge. We're losing people. We're people moving back and forth. Another thing we have to worry about, and people still don't understand, and our 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 sidelines people, definitely even our coaches, was the ball cross. As a driven ball, a driven ball means it's just almost like a shot, like a hard hit. Was the ball hit low on the ground? Was the ball lobbed? The ball was lobbed, which means high in the air, like a little chip type cross, like a slow cross trajectory. Those of you that have trained with me and those of you who know that the word, we use that word a lot. Trajectory just means the spin. Okay, so if they're taking the ball down the right side and they hit it, it's going to spin with the right footer possibly away from you. Okay. If the trajectory where they take the ball down and they hit it so hard it's not even moving, that means it has that knuckle on it. It's more of that driven ball. Those are the balls that are hard because you don't know what they're going to do, and that's where you probably should be punching than trying to, to catch because a, a driven knuckling ball comes a lot faster than it looks. The other thing that we have to look at on the trajectory is if they do lob a ball in, and they put more backspin on it. What backspin does is it holds the ball up in the air longer. So if we notice that the ball has that trajectory of that spin, we definitely should be going out higher off our line to go get that ball because it's going to sit in the air a lot longer. So that's one of those cues that we look for as we get older and we make, start to understand all these crosses is not just the first six things, but we have to start understanding this one. This is a huge one the spin on the ball. That's going to be big for us. And then if that wasn't worse, then we also have to understand where the ball is going to go. Is it going to go in the near post? Is it going in the far post? Is it going into the slot? Those are things that we still have to worry about. So if we take up a good position and we're already prepared, we're saying hopefully we could deal with that. Depending on the runners, if there is somebody in the near post, is there somebody running at the far post? Is there somebody running at the slot? Are they coming from all the areas? Those are all things that realistically we have to go through our mind and we have to deal with. And if we try to deal with all 14 of those things every single time a ball is coming down for a cross, you're probably going to make yourself go crazy. So like we said, everything that we talked about in the very beginning on organizing, organizing ourselves, making sure our body is set correctly, our positioning is set correctly, starting to go through these areas that we talked about, these zones that we talked about, and seeing that what the attackers look like, how close they are to the near post, how close they are to the far post. Are they inside the 18, inside the 12? There's so many things that happen off of a cross that crosses really take years for us to learn because there's so many items that we have to deal with. So it is hard for us to learn. 
And the hard part is that once we think we got it, the field players get that much faster, get that much stronger, get that much better, and they can hit the ball that much better. So we're constantly evolving as they are evolving. And so it takes time for us to get to that point. And again, as we get to those elite levels, if we want to play at the elite level, we want to make sure that we don't forget that we, if we're already prepared and we get into the point where uh, we, what is that? We have a question? Somebody's off of mute so I can hear you. Do you have a question? No? Okay. Good. So again, just so it is more of a review. So we're just reiterating. If we understand our body position, if we understand our angles, if we understand the difference between the shooting angle versus the crossing angle, it's going to make all those 14 things that we just talked about a lot less to worry about. So if we're better prepared then, and we're ready for what could happen and nothing surprises us, then we're probably going to do a lot more better or a lot more. We will succeed a lot more than we will not. Other than that, so does anybody have any questions on the stuff that we've kind of gone over? So this would be presentation form. It's hard to, to do until unless we went out and did it ourselves. This would be one of those things that if we were able to talk about this in a classroom, and then it would be great to be able to go out on the field and kind of discuss the, the areas and the zones on the field and start hitting balls in just to see it we can at this point. So hopefully, I'll, like I said, I will send this recording to you guys. You can look it over. You can always go back and to look at the clips. And as the clips are going, then you can start and stop them as much as you want. And you can look at it because it is big. It's those of you that will go into the our next session that we're doing and we're starting to learn how to assess ourselves in a game. These are the, start, these are the type of things you're gonna look at. It's definitely off of crosses. And, all the other parts that we'll we'll talk about, but for today, it was just all across. If there are no questions, that is it. We are done. Like we even got done before, right before eight. So good job. Other than that, I am done. Thank you guys. Enjoy the rest of your week, and I will see you again. Thank you, Thank coach. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank See you guys. You. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, coach. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, guys. Bye, Jeff. Thank you, 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 Jeff.